you get famous and all of this stuff's going on around you and you're like, yeah, I think I don't deserve this, you know? And uh, but that's kind of you know, that's where that comes from. That's where that's what self esteem is does to your head, you know. Mm. You're listening to Exposure on Radio X. I'm John Kennedy, and that is Sam Fender with the opening track to the new album. That is 17 Going Under. It is also the title track, and I'm very pleased to say that Sam Fender is sat in front of me. Hello, Sam. How Hello. are you? How are you? I'm good, mate. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. It's great to see you, I must say. Really enjoyed the conversation with Johnny Vaughan earlier on on Radio X this afternoon, which sounded fantastic, and you got to pid- fiddle about with a, a guitar for a little bit as yeah. well, which is obviously your natural default function. Yes, um, yes. But it's been a while, I suppose. I mean, really, I haven't seen you for a couple of years since Hypersonic Missiles came out and you've been touring the world with that and then everything changed for everybody. Uh, but 17 Going Under, the opening track, and uh, I'm assuming and thinking it's autobiographical. Is this yes. the closest we'll get to the biography of Sam Fender? Yeah, yeah, no, no. This this, this record is is quite, um, it's quite uh, introspective in, in that sense. It, because of the lockdown, I kind of... I didn't really have the things that I normally point at and write about, they weren't there. And I didn't have the pub, I didn't have the social aspect, so I didn't have things to talk to, you know, I didn't have people to talk to and find out that, what their crack was. Yeah. So the whole album became about uh, growing up. and So you were forced to, to look inside yourself. So instead of going to the Low Lights Tavern and listening in on people's conversations... Listening to the most, yeah, the most in, indiscreet uh, drug dealers on the planet... <laughs> chat about that rubbish uh, yeah and then you would just like get a song out of it but no, no there was none of that so it's been a it's been a, an introspective time <laughs> yeah tricky so I mean I understand that you had to shield in North Shields you were yes. shielding in North Shields so you got one of those letters which said actually you've yes. got to do more isolation than most yeah yeah I've got a health condition that I haven't really disclosed to the public yet but I might do at some point but uh, it's uh, I've had it since I was 20 and it affects my immune system pretty so it, it it's kind of makes us I'm susceptible to being ill when I get colds and stuff like that. Yeah. But uh but it's it's not you know, it's not changed my life drastically. It did when it happened, but now I'm 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 better I'm getting better now. So but uh yeah, so I was in I was stuck in the house for for a while. Yeah. And that was boring because I didn't really get to see anyone unless they were on Zoom, you know. <laughs> so, yeah. But uh but um you know I was conscious that you know it doesn't matter. Like I, I was lucky enough to be one of the people that isn't affected by it. You know, to the point where a lot of me mates were losing their jobs, and so I was always grateful of that. You know, but because of that time alone, it just gives us a lot of time to write as well, and gives us a lot of time to come up with lyrics and things. So, in a sense, I'm very grateful for the time. You know. Yeah. Yeah. And we're going to go into the album in depth and talk about the music and everything. But with with a song like Seventeen Going Under, then how does this start? Then you know when you're forced to be more inward and and start thinking about your life and and stuff like that. I mean, do you start writing words or do you start with the guitar? It it depends. Sometimes you get a melody first. Sometimes you get lyrics. You know, sometimes I'll, I'll just write sort of reels of lines and then and then I'll shoehorn them into a melody or a chord progression. You know. But then, but then sometimes you get the melody first. You hear it in your head, you know, mm. or you you get the chords and you go, "Wait, this is great!" You know, I'll go with this. Normally, the singles go melody first, I think. Right. Uh, and then the and then the more sort of album track ones, the ones that I like, <laughs> are the ones I've written down first, you know. So yeah. But uh, the ones with better choruses tend to fall out the sky. Right. You know? So with seventeen going under, then you, you're you're kind of suggesting that maybe the music came first with this. Yeah, yeah. Oh no, 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 no. I, I, yes, the, it was a guitar part first. Yeah, it was a guitar part first. Yeah, chord progression first. Yeah, and then I mean, at what point I'm thinking, do you start thinking about the different things that have been going on in in your life, and you know, you put yourself back to when you were 17. I did a bit of therapy. That's what made it happen. Right. I did a bit of therapy, and in uh, and in you, you, you know, you, all this stuff that you kind of they, they obviously they make you chat about being a kid and all that and uh, you know there's a lot of things that you kind of pass off as insignificant moments of your life but then they turn out to be you know quite poignant things that happen you know and how it affects and shapes your character when you get older so I, I, I guess that was the backdrop of lockdown I was talking about that stuff and that was always kind of like rattling you know it was in the back of me the corner of my brain and that that's where the all the material came from yeah I was just writing about what I was thinking about at the time 
Yeah, yeah. And then I mean, it maybe, you know, going through that therapy, you know, you started to remember things that you'd kind of pushed to one side or oh, buried. Yeah, completely. And completely. then and then, you know, how did you work out what would be a song and what would be in one Well, it's song? not, you know, I, I didn't, you know, I didn't go that deep, you know. Right, yeah. I didn't go mega, mega deep, you know, because to be honest, you know, there's, you've got to draw a boundary, you know. I, I write about stuff in my life, but there's also, you know, that my life is also, it is private, you know. I don't, you don't want to go too far sometimes, you know. But uh, I think I, I wrote about the stuff that I thought people would be like, well, I think a lot of people go through that sort of stuff, you know. Or a lot of people have experienced that growing up and, I thought I'd write about the stuff that was relatable and the stuff that I could hear being shouted back in an arena, you know, and the stuff that I think would uh, would be uplifting for people. As yeah, well. and I think that's what that's what I went for with yeah. with the vast majority of the of the record. I mean, it's it's not a particularly happy record, <laughs> but it's uh, but I think it's hopeful. Yeah, and I think that's what hypersonic was like as well, you know. Yeah, yeah, but then that's the thing because when you combine it with the music, it takes on a whole different atmosphere. Yeah, you no. Know, so, so we listen to Seventeen going under, and you no, know, it has such a, a a kind of thrusting momentum to it. You know, you, you kind of take us off our feet. It's a driving record. Yeah, completely. You no, know? and then there are all these ingredients that we then hear throughout the course of the album. So, you know, there's there's amazing drumming on this record, um, amazing guitar playing, but the, you know, there are all these other elements, the sax and the yeah. brass and the strings that come in later. Yeah. You no, know, it's when you wrote Seventeen Going Under. I mean, did you have those in your head? Did you hear all those? Yeah, the the, the music kind of comes together when you when 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 we're rehearsing and stuff. I I, I can always hear. What what the sax is doing normally because I, I I use the sax as like an extension of a vocal melody you know mm. I like the, I like to think of the sax as like it's another singer but a very you know growling singer you know yeah and uh, so I can always hear when the sax is coming in and I go to Johnny I gotta want you to do this and I'll sing a part to him and he'll get in and and smash it out like he always does you know with his with his ginormous lungs yeah <laughs> and he. Uh, and the guitar parts and all of that sort of stuff kind of that sometimes comes as the song's going you know as I'm recording it but uh, but a lot of the stuff like especially the things like the string parts the big sort of sweeping string parts and the sax parts and the brass sections that I put in on this song because this album's a lot bigger in terms of production to the first one there's a lot more going on yeah you know I wrote a lot more sort of musical parts for it and that that stuff I hear at night that's the stuff that comes in the middle of the night you know I'll be lying in bed and I can hear the orchestra yeah and that's when I get proper excited you know yeah to get into the studio and this obviously this time round we've had the freedom to do that and we've you know I'll have the confidence to do it because that's the thing on the first record like I was still figuring out how to make a record yeah you know? whereas this time I came I'm always learning you still learn how to make one but this time I came in with a, a d degree of confidence or you know, a level of confidence to actually make the album itself yeah yeah totally I think we'll go into that in more detail in, in due course Getting Started is the next song um, what can you tell us about this I mean again I mean the first half of the record you know you, the trajectory the the force the momentum just Driving. yeah it's fantastic and again this is another upbeat number yeah so Getting Started is essentially the story just follows on from 17. Mm. It's almost like, it's chronological because I'm, I'm, the first line is 18. You know, I would say I'm 18. Right. And it was just about that kind of, it's an extension of that time. But it's more of a sort of conversation uh, with me mom uh, as a young lad, you know, and uh, and kind of being like, you want to you wanna go out, you know, the stuff going on at home and things like that as a, as a teenager in your house. But you want to kind of, you go out with your mates and it's all about the escapism of that, you know, and drinking in the park and drinking on the beach and, but turning 18 and you're finally going out to pubs, you know? Yeah. And how that kind of, there's a level of escapism out with your friends and then, and then you come back and, and there's stuff going on that's very adult in your house. Like my mum was, uh, she kept getting letters from the DWP trying to get her to go back to work when she wasn't fit to work. She had fibromyalgia and various other ailments at the time and she wasn't well and I mean this is a woman who worked for 40 years as a nurse and you know never never 
never couldn't be asked not to work. You know, she yeah. was, she was always always grafting. And I, I used to when, as a kid, I I never see, seen her because she was always working on the wards in the night. You know, so she would come back in and uh, get late. You know, in the middle of the night. Uh, and I saw them sort of the the DWP the way they treat my mom when she wasn't fit to work. It, and it was just it left us with a lot of rage, you know, as a kid, because she sat there and we couldn't, you know, she was struggling to pay the rent, and and I was old enough to kind of understand it, but not old enough to be able to do anything about it, you know. So I was working in the pub, and you know, you know, boards not it doesn't stretch very far paying your mom board, it doesn't like, yeah. You know, um, so that's where that song comes from. It's kind of all about that kind of thing of you know, it's a very sort of this you're, you're starting to grow up and you're starting to. You know, you start sort of seeing what your folks have to deal with and and stuff like that. But it's but it's a it's a song where the, the main focus of it is is a kid just yearning for that escape and yearning to go off and do his thing. You know, it's a coming of age album. That's that's the whole thing. You know. Yeah, yeah, and it's interesting, isn't it? Because in a way, you'd have expected that for hypersonic missiles. You know that that might be the the coming of age album when you're just emerging, and you know the the build up to that debut, you know, w- was so great. You know, we're all really anticipating it. But it, it's almost because of you know the, the 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 lockdown and being forced to take stock that you you started writing this now. You know? Yeah, I couldn't really uh, sort of uh, write about that stuff earlier on because I didn't really know how to mm. I didn't really understand it but you get to a certain age where you can sort of articulate things yeah better. yeah and also I just got me mid-twenties and I sort of kind of figured out a way that you can write songs about this you know ab- about things that you know let's face it it's like it's not good cheery stuff is it but it you know um, but it trying to make that song something that rallies people and makes them want to have a party you know yeah but you know and i think i think a lot of people get it you know there's my mom had to do a load of tribunals and that and had to go and prove that she wasn't fit to work which i think is ridiculous that you know they're, they're forcing people who've worked all their life to to go and prove that they're not yeah you know when they're ill but i think there'll be millions of kids out there now and you know millions of people out there now as well who are who are in the same boat yeah and i think um Especially after the pandemic as well, you know, there's been loads of stuff going on. So I hope that I hope that you know someone listens to it and it gives them a you know gives them a rocket up their ass. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> well, I think that you know you, you can't help but be affected by the music. It sounds amazing, and it's interesting. Just in these two opening songs, there's so much turmoil and 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 tension, um, but also you no, know, there's there's a kind of a, a look to the future and. Um, a whole load of other things going on. There's a lot going on yes. in, in just the opening two songs. And we've only just got started ourselves, so that we better have the second of those. This is Getting Started. It is Sam Fender on Exposure, Radio X. Sounds like the police. It is Sam Fender on Exposure, Radio X. It is I. It is the third song on the brand new album, 17 Going Under. It has just come out tonight. Sam is talking us through it track by track. I is is uh, um, the most radio unfriendly uh, song on, <laughs> on the record um, that we've had to butcher in order to, to get it on the airwaves. Yeah, there's a lot of effing and jeffing. There is, indeed, yeah. But um, you've got to let these things out, haven't you? Of course. It's a, it's a song about it's essentially my... Uh, I kind of I'm sick of sick of all the politics and stuff. You know, I can't. Mm. Like I had this I had, when you're 22 and you're writing songs about politics. You you have this level of sort of relentless fearlessness that you don't. Like you know, you I could you feel like you know everything, don't you? When you're in your early 20s, and I kind of hit 25 after my first album came out and realised that I have no idea what I'm talking about. Yeah. <laughs> so this this song's my the one thing I am sure about is my disdain for the for the billionaires who don't pay their taxes you know yeah and that's kind of what the song's about because instead of going after these hedge funds and uh, money in the Cayman Islands they're going after single mothers <laughs> and the disabled <laughs> you know what I mean so that's the kind of the main premise of it it's also this idea that they're kind of like the Illuminati they've been there and They've witnessed all of these things throughout history and been sort of mysterious on the on the sidelines and untouched by 
all of these things that happened. That's why yeah. I mentioned loads of different yeah. points. Yeah. Well, of course, you are the pizza Illuminati. Yes. No. Yes, the, um, I am the pizza Illuminati. But, I mean, it's interesting, isn't it? So, you know, there's a whole combination of things, as with the first two <clears> songs. You know, there's disillusion, but you can really hear the anger that is coming through. So, you know, your, your disappointment in your options and choices politically, you know, it doesn't stop the frustration that you're feeling yeah. or your reaction to situations that are arising. And I think the great thing is, though, you at least get to channel it through the music and anybody feeling, feeling a similar way also gets to channel that yeah. through through your music. You no, know, I mean, you know, listening to I, especially, you know, it... It corresponds with idols or Fontaine's DC or, yeah. or, or, or bands like that who are you know full of that aggression and frustration. You know? yeah. and it's really interesting. You no, know, hearing that coming out of you as well. Yeah, yeah. You no, know, I'm sorry. It's Thank uh, you know it would hold your own on any of those post punk shows. I hope so. Mm, I, I think hope so. so. Definitely, and um, and it, there's all this great kind of clapping in I as yeah. well. You no, know? and uh, <laughs> so I mean you say the the music arises out of. Uh, you know, you take the songs to the band and then you work them up together, all those different parts, or, or is it more specifically no, I kind, done by I, you? No, kind of, I write a lot of the parts beforehand and then I, I'll do it in the studio, I'll play all the guitar parts and then the lads will come in and sort of learn the guitar parts that I've taught, or that I've, that, sorry, they'll learn the guitar parts that I've wrote, I'll teach them that. But then the boys put in little bits and of touches of their own stuff as well so like Joe my keyboard player he he always does like all the synth design you know he makes all the synths and he chooses sort of stuff and I'll, I'll be like that sounds great I love that you know and, um, and we'll use the OP one as well he's been cutting things up and doing a lot of stuff on that Joe Atkinson that's a big shout out for Joe and uh, Dino's just a force you know Dino's like the engineer as well in the studio he's we're kind of like a, a band, but also a recording team, do you know? Yeah. Like, and uh, I come up with the songs and then they they help us make them, you know? Yeah. They help us put them down. And, but a lot of the stuff is written, a lot of the music is written beforehand, before I bring it to the band, you know? Yeah, yeah. And where, where did you record the record? Some of it was done in Shields, and then some of it was done in Ireland, in Westmeath in a place called Grouse Lodge um, and then some of it was done in London so it was done all over the shop right. now. but a lot of it was done in Shields in my little place yeah that we've built so and you had built that specifically in order to to not have to leave Shields to not have to leave but then but then it's quite nice and fun to do it as well you know yeah. to go to different places but we wanted a bigger live, a live room so we went to we went to uh, Grouse Lodge for that hmm to record those drums to get some live stuff because we wanted to record it live like uh, so a lot of the band like we we I wanted to, to have that live feeling you know so there's a lot of stuff done live on the on the album some of it's done to click but a lot of it's done live yeah which we never did before yeah yeah you know? Well, I mean, the live thing is so impressive. I mean, I've been seeing some of these performances over the summer at the various different festivals that that you, you've played at, and there's so many people on stage now. There's yeah. so, it's, it's it's such a full-on sound, yeah, it's such yeah. a full-on attack. It's really impressive, and it's really well reflected in in the album as well. You no, know, yeah, you no, know, it's it's fantastic. Drew, Drew's practically a metronome on his own, anyway. The drummer, you know? yeah, he's like he's so so precise. He's a real machine, you know. So that's kind of always helped the fact that we're as a live band we can we can rely on him to be so solid, you know. Yeah, yeah, totally. With Get You Down, I mean that builds and builds. I mean I, I thought of bands like Arcade Fire or, or the yeah. Walkman or, or, or bands like that that you know it really kind of take us and and then you know throw us around the room. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, totally. No, it's amazing. Yeah, Arcade Fire. Thank, well, funnily enough, you say Arcade Fire, uh, Craig Sylvie who mixed our album he did the suburbs right the third arcade fire record yeah. and i purposely picked him for that reason because i wanted to have that arcade fire thing yeah so you uh, you obviously picked up on it. <laughs> yeah i can hear it i mean it sounds amazing but obviously it's it's with the sam fender touch you know yeah. um which it, you know it's always so good to hear what can you tell us about get you down then get you down is a it's a song about how sort of self-esteem issues affect your relationship and affect your partner who you're with you know um and it kind of that's basically what, that's pretty much the premise of it it's sort of about that grow up with certain things and 
and as you get older, you sometimes people let self-esteem get the better of them, and I, I definitely did a few times, you know, uh, especially in me in me relationships in the past. Um, and that's kind of what that song's about. It's about that moment where you're like, you know you're in the wrong, and you know you're being, you know you're being hard to be around, but you can't stop it. You're like aware of it, and you're aware of the fact that you, you know, it's not healthy anymore. But you can't seem to get a hold of it, mm. uh, and it's it's quite a sad one. But it was uh, I I wanted to get that song right, you know, and uh, and it's it's. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Yeah. <laughs> that's what it's about. Well, we're going to hear it now. But it's but quite. It's but the strings are very emotive, you know. Yeah. So I mean, how are you writing these string parts? You know, when I you're just, in the middle of the night, when they come to you, and I, play, I play them on the guitar or I sing them in. Right. So I like I have a pedal and I put a big reverb on it, so it sounds like strings, mm. and then I write them in, and then I get the strings people to do them. Yeah. Let's get it scored up and then get it yeah. done. Yeah. But they've got something to work from. Yeah. Yeah. Fantastic! You know, it's 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 all over the record, isn't it? I mean, it's such a vital part of the sound of Seventeen Going Under, and you'll be able to hear it here. This is Sam Fender with "Get You Down" on Exposure Radio X. It is Sam Fender with "Long Way Off" on Exposure Radio X. I'm John Kennedy. With me tonight is Sam Fender himself. He's talking us through the whole of his new album, Seventeen Going Under. It's his second record. It just came out, and that it seems amazing to me that it is only your second album because I feel I've been listening to you for so long, and and there've been so many amazing performances. Um, and you know, it, it, like the song, I mean, you're only just getting started, really. You no, know? and and yet you have this this kind of wall of noise now, Sam. <laughs> No, it's not just the, the the boy who got up on stage on his own anymore. No, no, it's like a, a, a mini you, Sam Fender army. <laughs> Thank you, man. Thank it's you. it's true though. You know, um, I mean, in a way, with long way off, you kind of slow things down a little. You know, it, it, it gets pretty uh, hypnotic with that repeated kind of keyboard phrase in there. But for yeah. the first time on the record, you kind of calm things down. For Cruiser, us. yeah, yeah. And it, but it's a monster as well. Big, powerful drums. Yeah, completely. I mean, when you're writing these songs, I mean, the drums seem to be such a vital part of this album, you know, and they are so big and so forceful, even on the ballads almost. You know? Yeah. Um, have you got them in your mind when you're writing it? What, the drums? Yes. Yeah, not yeah. always, definitely, you know. It's, um, I, I, me and my drummer are really, really good mates, you know, and uh, I always want to make sure that his job isn't boring. <laughs> right. So you know, like it's got to be, it's got to be monstrous, and then it's got to happen. But we, like, he's a proper groove player. Drew's such a fantastic, incredible groove player, and he's so tasteful when he plays that, like, I, I don't have a hard job. You know, I know that he can play whatever I want mm. him to play, and and I know that when he gets in on it as well, he just knows how to make. So I, I'll lay down a simple, the simplified version. And then he goes in and makes it sound like a real drummer has wrote the part, you know, because he goes in and touches up the parts himself, you know, and comes up with the little ideas and stuff. And uh, it's always a big part of it because the drums, like a lot of my favourite records have got, I mean, I, I listen to a lot of hip hop as well, you know, and a lot of the drums on that is like, I love, like, I love something that's like really, really monsterish. Yeah. You know, that like hits you right in the face. I love air. Uh, and I love the Beastie Boys as well. Mm. You know, like the early early Beastie Boys stuff. Like, I love all that. Like the the power behind things like Sabotage and stuff like that. Yeah, I yeah. Love that. Well, s- slow and low from that first album. <laughs> yeah, massive, yeah. massive drum sound on Monster. that. Monster, yeah. Monster. But uh, but yeah, yeah. No, the dr- drum parts are it's it's so important because it's where the song starts. Really, mm. you know, it's the first thing you do when you're recording. Yeah. So it has to be, it has to be perfect. You know, or, yeah. Or you, you kind of. If the drums aren't right, then it's like a, uh, what's what's that saying? My dad used to say, uh, a, a crap band with a great drummer could be a decent band, or if in it, but a what is it? But if a a brilliant band with a crap drummer is a <laughs> band, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's so important, you know. Yeah, it needs to be the way. Of, it's fascinating. So, long way off. What's the, what's this one about? It is. It's similar to I, right? Essentially, 
it's like the same sort of thing. It was around that time that things were going mental in America. All yeah. the people were storming the Capitol steps. And it's about the fact that I feel sort of... Um, I feel sort of like I have nobody to vote for or nobody to sort of believe. And it's that, that sort of the polarity between the left and the right is so far that you kind of feel like there isn't anyone to kind of stick behind. So that's what I'm saying. I'm still at the, the line. Well, we're still a long way off from things being a bit more sort of, well, a, a bit less mental. Because yeah. at the moment, it's just everything, you know, that online's so so toxic, you know. People are, people, the, the discussions just don't, like reasonable discussion just doesn't seem to be a thing. It doesn't seem to exist. Context is completely removed from everything. Everything's really black and white. You know, people trying to discuss like very grey situations and make them black and white. And that's one of the lines, you know. All the endless grey conundrums that are painted black and white. That's one of the lines in the song. And uh, it's the, it's about that frustration that it's kind of like you know we're still led by a bunch of morons. Yeah, I'm kind of hoping that it changes one day. Yeah. I suppose I'm waiting for the Messiah, but you know, I think I think that's the, I think I'm gonna hit fifty and realize like everybody that the Messiah never comes. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean it may be a long way off, but you know we can but hope that there is some silver lining to. I hope so. Whatever clouds are around. I hope so because you know we've been led a merry dance with all this Brexit stuff, and you know it's a right mess. So I think you know a lot of things were promised that didn't happen. So. But hey ho, mm. but it's a, it's got a massive, massive, massive brass section in it. I it, think it sounds like a Bond theme. Yeah, oh, it totally does. You know, when the strings come in, and then when the brass come in, and then later, it's fantastic. Now, how big is that brass set? It was pretty huge. I mean, it's the biggest track we've made, like in terms of audio. It was 164 tracks of audio on that song. Wow, it was ginormous. You know, brass, strings, synths, guitars, bass, drums. Glockenspiels. <laughs> it's every, all there. It's insane. It's amazing. And it, it's so forceful. It, it it makes such an impact, I think. Thank it's you, really man. exciting. Spit of You is the next song. And in a way, you know, in contrast maybe to Long Way Off, this gets more personal again and brings it back to you. Yeah. It's kind of about, it's about me and my dad. And uh, it's about kind of how we're, we're struggled to sort of communicate to each other when we when I was growing up and, becoming old as I was getting at my twenties as well. Um and kind of how you know, without it kind of without we're wanting to punch each other's heads in. <laughs> Do you know? uh, and um and it's you know it but it's it's also about how I'm very much like him and how I'm a, you know, the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. Um and if anything, it's sort of a it's a declaration of love for for the guy, you know. Because I love him a bit, you know, um, and you know he's my best mate, really. Um, but this, uh, the second half of the uh, of the of the song, the, the second verse, is about him saying goodbye to my mother, uh, my grandmother, and how that moment I saw him kiss her forehead when she was dying, and how I I realised that I'm gonna be there one day with him, you know. And that it kind of made us realise that you know you, you've got to make the most of your time, and whatever grudges you have and things, you've got to you've got to sort them out. You've got to iron them out because if you don't, you just waste so much time, mm. you know. And I did, I, you know, I, I, I took me like you know six seven years to kind of say my piece, and uh, you know, which must be which must have been really frustrating for him as well. Because yeah, I mean, he's like. You know, you're not said anything, and it's like, but we're, we're we're both we're both classic blokes in the sense that we don't like, you don't talk about that sort of stuff, do you? You know, you just talk about we talk about music, we we'll have a laugh, we we'll have a drink, we we'll have a great crack on. But then whenever anything serious kind of comes up, we'll just be like, what? <laughs> yeah. So, but uh, you know, it's that's we did, and we're like closer than we've ever been, you know. And he's he's just an absolute hero, you know. I love the guy to bit. And I am the spit of them. <laughs> right. Wow. Hence why it's called Spit of You, you know. Yeah. Fantastic. Um, well, we've got to dedicate this to him. This we? one's for Big Al. Fantastic. This is it. It's Spit of You. It's Sam Fender on Radio X. 
You're listening to Exposure on Radio X. I'm John Kennedy, and that is Sam Fender with Last to Make It Home. It is another selection from the new album, 17 Going Under. I'm playing you the whole thing with Sam himself, talking us through it track by track. Um, and uh, this is the tale of the committed hedonist, is it, Sam? You completely. Yeah, the tale of the committed loser. Like the, the, the tale of the loser scumbag drinker, useless boyfriend useless divvy yeah. right and yeah. and i'm thinking because to me i think you're way too hard on yourself and you're <laughs> you, you're saying you are that person in last to make it hard hi which it, it is about me really you know yeah uh, but it it's you know I, it, again it's about self-esteem you know and that's that's sort of what i thought of myself at that time when i wrote that song you know uh and you know f- you, you get famous and you have massive imposter syndrome, especially if you're like that and you've got a bit of a low self-esteem and you kind of think, ah, you know, you get famous and all of this stuff's going on around you and you're like, yeah, I don't, I don't deserve this, you know? And uh, But that's kind of, you know, that's where that comes from. That's where, that's what self-esteem is, does to your head, you know? Mm. You don't you don't think you deserve certain things, but uh, but it's a lot better now, you know? I've, you know, I've done, I've done the work. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, and uh, so yeah, that song is about that. It's about it's about it's a kind of the, the it's the it's the low life song, you know. But uh, I think we we all have moments like that, you know. Yeah. Everyone has moments where you feel like that. And uh, it was kind of one of those moments where you realise as well that like you know you're caning it a bit too hard. You're not you're not dealing with the, you know you're not processing emotions in a healthy way. You know you're processing it you know in down the pub you know. Which you you know you can process emotions healthily in the pub. I've done it, you know, but just don't like have fifteen pints in a fight. Because <laughs> <laughs> right. if you have fifteen pints in a fight, then it's not really the healthiest way to do it, is it? Yeah. <laughs> and that's kind of what yeah that's what that song's about. You know, it's about when you kind of you're starting to click on that. You're like you know I'm actually kind of I probably need a bit of a hand. You know? mm. And th- there's another song like that on this record as well, the very last one. Yeah. Well, we'll get on to that. Um, but, you know, it's great that you you know, you know had that realisation, that you had that moment where you get to step aside and think, hang on a minute, no, maybe it's time to take stock. Um, the Leveller is the next song, uh, taking it back, more upbeat. Um, still, you know, the drums roll, they pound, there's strings in there. It's, it's such I feel like this one sometimes sounds like Queens of the Stone Age. Yeah, I get that, yeah. At the very it's, end. Yeah, well, all that screeching guitar. The guitar solo, I was like going full pelt Josh Homme on that. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. So yeah, I mean he's in hot water at the moment, like so. <laughs> but uh, but uh, yeah, the music's good though. Yeah. yeah. Oh, totally. No, we're, we're, you know, that's the thing. That's life. You know, yeah. you get in hot water, you jump out. You. Of course. Got to, got to, got to just keep. Uh, you got to just go through it, haven't you? But I, uh, yeah, this, it, this one's kind of more. It's a. It was a kind of. It was a. It's a, it's a, it's the, it's a song sort of about similar sort of stuff about depression, about anxiety, about you know self esteem and all that, but it's about kind of when you turn around, you go, I'm not, I'm not gonna be beaten by this, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm not gonna let it get me, you know, I'm gonna plow through, mm. and that's what, that's what this song is. It's, it's kind of like it was during the lockdown, and it's the frustration of, of that, of those, of those things, you know. And how that makes you, you know, sometimes it can make you feel defeated, but sometimes it can make you want to fight, you know. And that's what that song is about. Yeah. What What is the leveler? In this the instance? leveler is was actually was actually me kind of talking about this COVID situation, you know. But the the main premise of the song is kind of about overcoming the depression and stuff. But the leveler I was saying like, you know, this is a situation in in which everyone is in the same boat, you know. No matter how rich they are or who they are, you know what I mean. Yeah. I mean, obviously, there's variants and different things that people have to struggle with in their own life. Losing your job and things like that's different, you know. Unlike you know, but then, but but the COVID thing itself, it had such a massive effect on the whole world. Yeah. And you know, and how that I said it was, it's like it's gonna level, it's gonna level up the whole the whole world was getting leveled, the economy was getting leveled, you know. Um. But it's about that kind of. It's kind of going. I'm not going to be. I'm not going to go down with it. You know. Mm. It's a. It's a fighting song. Excellent. And this is it. Sam Fender with the Leveller on Radio X.
You're listening to Exposure on Radio X. I'm John Kennedy, and that is another song from Sam Fender from the new album 17 Going Under. That is Mantra. It's track nine. You get gentle and reflective on Mantra. It's, it's literally, right? It's it's Joni Mitchell. It is. I've written down Laurel Canyon. Yeah. It has a Laurel Canyon feel. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I was in LA when I wrote it as well. It's the only song I've ever wrote outside of... Uh, it's the only song I've ever wrote in LA. Right. And it was when I, I was in a bit of a fettle at the time. And uh, I was like, uh, basically I'd been hanging around with people in the industry who were, you know, I've got, you know, were, let's let's face it, they were a bit of <laughs> 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 And I was just like, you know, I can't be bothered. Like there's, there was just people that like, you know, you, you meet a lot of, you meet a lot of sociopaths right. in this in this walk of life yeah. <laughs> and uh, I was just kind of and because of the the way I am I'm, I find myself sometimes I can be a bit of a people pleaser I'm trying to unlearn that now to not be like that you know so I didn't want to be you know that's why the first line is please stop trying to impress people who don't care about you you know because mm. what's the point you know like so that was uh, that's where this song comes from it's basically like a, it, it's a mantra to the self to be like don't worry about these idiots they're all assholes. you don't need them in your life don't pander to them stop trying to seek acceptance in those who have you know no warmth towards you or those who don't care and you should just stick to the people who you know are good and the people who care about you you know yeah and that's what that song is about and i wrote it on a bmx hired bmx driving through riding through gridlock traffic in Los Angeles on a boiling hot day and I was like this is class and I pedaled all the way up to Hollywood and went pedaled straight to the guitar shop on Sunset uh, Boulevard ran in was like where's the guitar picked up a 12 string had was singing the melody on the bike going I need to get a guitar fast and I don't have one on us so I, I pedaled all the way from Redondo Beach to <laughs> to Hollywood Straight into the guitar shop. Can I have a shot of the guitar, please, mate? Aye, aye. Yeah, aye, aye. He was a Geordie. <laughs> <laughs> Only Geordie in LA. No. He was this American guy, and he was like, uh, he was like, he's like, yeah, grab that. And I picked it up and sat and, sat and wrote the song in a guitar shop on Sunset. <laughs> that is amazing. What, and recorded it on your phone? Right? Recorded yeah, yeah. it on my voice yeah. clips, aye. Yeah. And Fantastic. Then, and like, then got straight back down and I was like, right, that's getting I'm going in the studio there. And we're gonna put a massive trumpet solo on it. I love the trumpet on yeah, that song. It is amazing, isn't it? It's proper like that's how I mate Mark. Big shout out to Mark. He's a fantastic trumpet player. Big Geordie lad. And uh he's gonna he comes out on for some of the bigger gigs, you know. Yeah. When we get the Geordie brass section in, they've all got tune tops on. <laughs> that is so good. And then Paradigms is the next song. Yes, and uh, this starts with the drums. Then the, you know, chopping guitars. You got piano in there. What, what's it all about? What's going on? So this song's kind of, it's kind of like a, a summary, of all of those things that you that you grew up with that make you feel you know like insecure and make you kind of character. You know, it's all of the things that affect you as a kid. It's kind of like a summary of it all, and how you know. No one should feel shite. <laughs> it's like it's a it's a it's a rally cry to be like no one should be like this. No one has to has to feel like this, you know. And I'm obviously I, I, I want to you know I'm always want to keep like mental health at the forefront of me a lot of my conversations because I've had a lot of friends who've you know sadly I've lost because of mental health. You know, mm. um, even one just last year. Um, you know, which goes to show that you know. You know, it's, especially in boys as well. There's like a lot of you know stigma around you know talking, but a lot of lads I know who've suffered in silence for so long, and uh, you know that's what I kind of want to keep hammering home with these songs because I think you know no one should suffer in silence. It's daft, you know. Yeah. And there's 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 things that you can do, and there's contingency plans that can be put in place to even if it's within your own circle of mates, you know. Even if it's just having a can with your friend, it's the things like that just, you, you know, it's important. And uh, especially after we lost an, an, another good friend last year, um, kind of just really that hammered home for us as a as a town mm. and, a, and a group of people. 
in a group of friends, like how important it is that you've got to keep an eye out on for each other, you know. So that's what Paradigms is like. It's like a rally cry. And at the very end, when I say, when I'm shouting the line, no one should feel like this, I got all of me mates from my hometown to come and sing that with us. So it actually is the people who knew our friend who sadly took his life um, last year. You know, there's all of these people from my actual hometown all singing that line, you know, which I think is quite a beautiful thing, you know. It's quite powerful. Yeah, totally. No one Fantastic. should. No one should feel like this, and that, no one should. You know, it's. No one deserves to feel crap. You know. Yeah. So yeah. that's what that's about, and the last song is about that as well. Right. Well, we'll pick up on that after we hear the the Toon Army uh, singing along. Yes. Uh, to Paradigms. This is Paradigms. It's Sam Fender on Radio X. It is Sam Fender with Paradigms, the penultimate track on Seventeen Going Under, the new album, which has just come out and we've been playing you the whole thing and sam has talked us through it track by track dying light is the next song the final song and you were saying that this continues the theme um that you were talking about in paradigms but in a way it's got a different kind of musical treatment hasn't it yes so this one is basically it's about my hometown and it's essentially like a sequel to dead boys the song of my single off my first album Mm. it's about about male suicide and it's about how it's still, you know, it's still very much an issue in the country. And how, you know, I'd, I'd lost another mate last, even just before COVID, you know. And we were like, you know, everyone was completely shook again. And the fact that it had happened again in my hometown and with someone who everybody loved so dearly, you know, uh, one of the funniest, most caring, lovely people you could ever me you know um and it was you know it was a massive massive shock for the community and for us and and that's what the song's about it's you know it's kind of this is it's the dying light it's like but it's also about a character being in that place himself or herself but then having the switch and realizing that you need help, you know, and that 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 moment where it's like you know, the the line is uh you know. The 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 night is so impossible it haunts the few who dare to look. Its marks are so hereditary that I'm terrified of having kids, but I'll be damned if I give up tonight. I must rebuild the dying light for my mom, my dad, and all my pals, and for all the ones who didn't make the night. And it's this thing of like going, there's been too many now, you know, we've got to this person in the song turns around and goes, no, I'm not, I'm not this time. And it's kind of like a, like a triumph over it. Whereas the Dead Boys was kind of about what it was about. You know, it was about the, the, that itself. Whereas the dying light is about overcoming it yeah, and not surrendering to the darkness, you know? Fantastic, Sam. It's been so good having you here. So great to see you. And thanks for so giving much. us the lowdown. Oh, no, thanks album. so much for having us, mate. It's always a pleasure chatting to you. It's uh, likewise. Um, and this is the last song then on the new album by Sam Fender, 17 Going Under. This is Dying Light on Radio X. Radio X.